Okay, so hello and welcome to this video tutorial for E411 Statics and Dynamics of Simple Mechanisms. So we have this problem here. It states uh, the 10 kilo block is subjected to the forces shown. In each case, determine its velocity at s equals 8 if v is equal to 3 when s is equal to 0. Motion occurs to the right. Uh, let's First of all, this is a challenging problem. If perhaps in... Uh, certain situations during this tutorial, you have no clue what's going on. That is totally fine. Um, please feel free to drop into the ask or, um, uh, or, or look further into some of the kind of um, constituent mathematical skills that are involved in this problem. Um, let's get started with this first uh, problem. So like I say, it's challenging. Um, first of all, uh, we've got, a, we, we've got both horizontal and uh, vertical for forces acting on this uh, block here. Now, I'm going to say we need to, we, we should ignore the vertical force here. The reason being is because, you know, if you if you wanted to draw a, a full free body diagram of what's going on here, you'd, you'd have this 200 Newton external force acting vertically here, but you'd also have um, the weight of the block acting down um, and you'd also have the normal force acting. And maybe you'd also want to consider friction as well, understanding that friction can be given by the product of the um, coefficient of static friction with uh, the normal force acting on the block in previous problems that we've done. In this instance, though, there's no mention of uh, a frictional uh, coefficient. Um, it also says motion occurs to the right. L long story short, we're just going to ignore this. Um, vertical idea here. We're going to say that the sum of the forces in the x direction are equal to 10. 40 minus 30 is 10. Easy. Uh, we understand also that uh, the sum of the forces in a given direction are equal to uh, mass times acceleration in that direction. So we can therefore say then that 10, or the, the sum of the forces acting horizontally here, are equal to the mass which is 10 kilos um, times acceleration. So 10 equals 10A, therefore A equals 1. Using um, this idea that we might have, or you might have used previously, uh, this idea that A is equal to the derivative of velocity with time, we can rewrite this. We can say that, uh, therefore, uh, dV over dt equals 1. We can integrate both sides of this with respect to t, um, which gives us uh, that v is equal to whoops uh, t plus c. Okay, so I've done the integration there. Um, now it states in the problem uh, that v is equal to three at s is equal to zero. Um, Notationally, I could say I could write it like this. I could say v at uh, s equals zero uh, equals three. But it's not very clear that that's an s, but whatever. Um, I'm hoping that it should be intuitive to you guys uh, that this is kind of an initial condition. Okay, so this this is basically just telling us at the start of motion or at the start of this this kind of process uh, going on here uh, that the, the velocity or the initial velocity is three so so we can state as it states in the problem that v when s is equal to zero is three we can also state that v when t is equal to zero is also three okay um, so I'm going to say for uh, that I'm going to substitute three in for v and I'm going to substitute zero in for t three equals zero plus c therefore C equals three. Let's go all the way up here again. Uh, so we can therefore say that velocity here is given by time plus three. Um, we're looking for um, the velocity when displacement is at eight meters here. What I'm gonna do, or the way I'd approach this is kind of do an extension of um, this idea. So we understand that acceleration can be defined as the rate of change of velocity uh, per unit time. 
But you can also understand um, velocity as the uh, rate of change of displacement per unit time. You know, if I displace one meter every second, then I'm traveling at a velocity of one meter per second. So I can rewrite this again as a differential equation, ds over dt is equal to t plus three. And let's integrate both sides with respect to t. I'm just gonna take a while to write out. Here we are, square brackets, dt. Okay, um, and this gives s is equal to a half t squared plus um, 3t plus c. Um, noting that we understand this idea that when um, that, that that s when s equals zero t, t equals zero uh, we can we can substitute in zero for both um, s and t here and say therefore c equals zero therefore s equals a half t squared plus three t and this is this is our function then for um, S in terms of T. Uh, so we have S in terms of T, we have V in terms of T. Um, we're looking for V when S takes a value of 8. So let's substitute 8 in for S here. Let's take this all the way up again. So S takes a, let, let, let S take a value of eight. Um, uh, let's look at the value for time when we, we've displaced eight. I'm going to subtract eight from both sides because I recognize that this is a quadratic. And if you want to solve a quadratic, or solve the roots of quadratic, it makes sense first to make one side equal to zero. I'm going to um, multiply both sides by two here um, just to get rid of this 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 half, this, um, this half coefficient here. Um, and if any of you are familiar with factorizing quadratics, you'll know I'm looking for something that multiplies together to give 16, uh, minus 16, uh, and adds together to give plus 6. So um, uh, eight and minus two, right? So uh, t uh, minus two and t plus eight. That's this is just the factorized version of this. We can therefore say then uh, t one is equal to two, t two is equal to minus eight. I'm going to say that we can ignore this minus eight, given that it's in the negative region. We're assuming here that t just starts from zero and progresses in the positive direction. So um, we understand now that uh, at a displacement of eight, two seconds have passed, or when two seconds have passed, we've displaced eight meters, same thing. Um, we can therefore say, uh, let me just move my face here, get out of the way you, that v uh, at t equals 2 is equal to v at s equals 8 is equal to, well, we have um, velocity in terms of time here. We can substitute 2 in for t uh, is equal to 5 uh, meters per second. Boom. So this took quite a lot of work. This is why I, I mentioned earlier that this is quite a challenging um, problem. There may be simpler ways to approach this problem, but this is just the way that I would approach this problem. Okay. Um, now, part B to this is even more challenging. Uh, let's move on to part B. So we want to determine, let's just write it up here. We want to determine um, uh, velocity at uh, s equals 8. So um, first of all, it's self-evident again that the uh, sum of the forces in the x here is equal to uh, 
S. Um, when we introduce this uh, F equals M A idea, we find that 2.5 S uh, is equal to 10 A. We could therefore say then that A dividing both sides by 10 is equal to a quarter S. Um, now, I spent a lot of time with this problem. Uh, I went in lots of different directions with it. Um, we can understand A as uh, the second derivative of displacement with respect to time. Um, express it like this. Although this isn't, by inspection, this isn't particularly solvable, right? If I wanted to um, solve this, this differential equation, I'd want to um, integrate both sides with respect to t, except we have this s variable on the right hand side here. Um, and moving it over to the left hand side doesn't really do us any favours either. This is when we introduce a, a new idea that I've only just discovered today. Um, so uh, let me just find my notes on this. So um, yeah, so we can understand A as uh, the derivative of velocity with respect to time. We understand this idea. Um, we can express dv over dt um, like this. This is an example of something that's called the chain rule. If you want to find out more about it, you can look it up. But essentially, the idea here is that, you know, I can express dv over dt as the product of dv over ds and ds over dt. Uh, and you can kind of understand this intuitively, noting that the ds is kind of cancel and you're left with um, dv over dt. Uh, note that ds over dt, like we talked about earlier, um, is equivalent to velocity, right? So I can therefore say then uh, that dv over dt is, oh, hang on, no, that's wrong. I, I can say that acceleration is equal to uh, dv over ds uh, times v, right? So, um, substituting or replacing this ds over dt with v. I can say this then. Um, and earlier we stated that a is equal to a quarter s. I can say therefore uh, v dv over ds is equal to um, a quarter s. I'm going to move this ds over to the right hand side, just multiplying both sides by it in a sense. Let me rub it out. There we go. And I'm going to integrate, right? Notice we're, we're integrating the left-hand side with respect to V and the right-hand side with respect to S here. This is giving us a, a, a way through. So the integral of V with respect to V, well, that's just a half V squared. And uh, a quarter S with respect to S, well, that's going to be um, an eighth S squared plus C. Um, bringing in the information we had earlier, V when S is equal to zero is equal to three. Uh, therefore, uh, therefore, a half times uh, three squared uh, is equal to um, zero plus c. Uh, let's just take this up here. Um, a half times nine, that's 4.5 is equal to c. Um, so we have then this uh, full equation for V in terms of S. Four point five. Okay. 
Okay, we're trying to determine V when S is equal to eight. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of um, pretty up my, I'm, I'm just going to get rid of this half and this square uh, on the left hand side. So I'm going to multiply both sides by two uh, first, which will give me V squared is equal to a quarter uh, S squared plus nine. And I'm going to square root both sides. So V is equal to square root of a quarter S squared plus nine. Therefore, V when S equals eight is equal to uh, root uh, a quarter times 64 plus nine. Okay, I haven't actually done this yet. So square root of 0.25 times 64 um, plus nine. That gives me five. It's equal to five meters per second. Okay. Um, so like I said at the start of the problem, this is quite a challenging uh, problem. We introduced this, this A equals DV over DSV idea here. Um, and way, another way that you might sometimes see this, let me write this out in green, I don't know. Another way you might sometimes see this idea is, is it written out like this, right? Um, so yeah, that, this is just kind of a, um, a, a kinematic idea um, that you might come across to solve problems like this. So if you have any questions or comments about this problem, please feel free to leave in the comments down 